Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service with you on this 5th of July. Thanks for joining us again for your Alaska weather. Anytime you want to check your forecast, I'd like to remind folks to save this number. The Alaska Weather Information Line right there, 1-800-472-0391, is available 24 hours a day. Simply save those numbers that you uh, get from the audio prompts, write them down, and you can have your forecast at your fingertips, as they say. You can also, also use it online, weather.gov slash Alaska is your access to all of the Alaska National Weather Service services, whether that's your aviation forecast, uh, information about tsunamis, uh, if earthquakes occur somewhere around Alaska, uh, fire weather information, as well as flooding information. If the rivers are running a little high, it's an easy place to check. Uh, get the latest forecast and precipitation information for your watershed. And of course, your regular forecast. It talks about the clouds, the rain, the thunder, lightning, and anything in between around Alaska in the summertime. And if you can't find what you want, let me know, david.snyder at noaa.gov. Here's a look at the fire danger. Speaking of which, uh, we're talking about areas across the middle and upper Yukon Valley today. They're starting to dry out a little bit more. Haven't seen a wealth of precipitation move through. That may change as we get into the next week or so. Uh, conditions could get a little bit wetter, but in the meantime, they're fairly dry. At least high fire danger, and probably towing the line, if not across it, for many parts of the central and eastern sections of the interior and the west around uh, the upper Koyukuk starting to dry out a little bit as well. Now we know around the Susitna Valley into western parts of the Kenai, including the Anchorage Bowl, that conditions are uh, pretty dry there. Uh, burn bans for the municipality of Anchorage are in effect, if you haven't been aware of that. Uh, so that may affect your weekend plans as we start to head southward toward the Kenai uh, for some fishing here coming up uh, through the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye on that if you're uh, heading outside. And across the Copper River Valley, we're still talking about uh, higher levels of uh, fire danger there. Uh, not quite into the extreme in most cases that we've seen yet, but certainly worth keeping an eye on. This is updated as of the 5th of July. You can get your latest fire weather information and forecast for uh, the dryness level around Alaska by going to fire.ak.blm.gov. Here's a look at the visible satellite picture now, my favorite any time of the year, but certainly in the summer because we start to see the blossoming of clouds across the interior with the heating of the day. A front dropping out of the Arctic today in the last uh, day or so as it's moved across as allowing colder air to drop southward toward the upper Yukon Valley and the northern half of Yukon itself. And as that's happened, we're seeing that line of rain and thunder developing here across uh, the midsection, maybe from Dawson out toward Northway and uh, generally east of Fairbanks so far today. You can also see some of the lower clouds spreading into the uh, northern sections of Alaska as a result of that. We've got a weak area of low pressure here across the Gulf. High pressure has helped to keep a lot of southeast generally dry today, so a pretty pleasant day again for southeast. And out west, uh, pockets of low pressure sitting across the central and western Bering Sea. A much larger weather system is trying to work its way in, and it will be here as we head through the next 24 to 48 hours for the uh, central and eastern chain. You'll already see the clouds moving in as a result today. By tonight, if you're in Unalaska, out toward Okolski and the central chain, you're going to have a little more rain and wind developing as we head into this point by tomorrow. Now across south central, plenty of sunshine there. Out west, low clouds and fog, maybe a little bit of stratus and some light rain at times as well. But overall, uh, dry conditions through a large part of the interior. As I said, it does look like some of that's going to change. Here's the surface weather maps and the initial push of that colder air moving across the central and eastern Beaufort Seacoast brought us some thunderstorms and it brought some wind and now we're just dealing with the leftovers, the fog and the stratus and the showers, uh, maybe a little bit of drizzle there. Rain and thunderstorm at times across parts of the central and eastern interior. A lot of that generally south of the Tanana Valley and into the Alaska Range. Low pressure sitting around Prince William Sound, still a fairly nice day there, and generally dry conditions across most of southeast. Now out across the west, if you look carefully at the pressure pattern, you can detect low pressure lurking just uh, south and west of Attu Island. As we get into tonight, you can barely see that central area working its way into the western chain. It's about 998 millibars there. The warmer air leads the surge as that moves through the Aleutians, and ahead of that, we'll see more clouds, probably some fog, a drizzle, and some light rainfall working its way into the uh, areas around Nikolski and maybe Dutch Harbor in Alaska and Akatan as we get into overnight and early morning tomorrow. By Friday afternoon, it should be in place. 
Across southeast, drier weather there for the central and northern parts of the archipelago. Out around Prince William Sound, a few more clouds. Looks like showers will start to creep southward into the Chugach there. Showers may develop with the heat of the day across the Alaska Range into the upper Tanana Valley and the Copper River Basin. will be kind of right there on the fringe. A lot of that may be right around the mountains and not necessarily over the valley itself. Uh, the squiggly lines mean that we're dealing with smoke. Uh, some of that will, of course, be trapped as we cool off the atmosphere during the evening hours. It's not a huge cooling pattern as we're not that far away from the solstice just yet, but there is some cooling that takes place. And as a result of that, it may trap some of that particulate smoke in the area. High pressure sitting just north of Nunavak Island will run around 1,021 millibars, so it's still large enough to be in charge. And because of that, we may have some fog stretching down the west coast up toward Utkiavik, uh, Wainwright, and into the Kotzebue Sound region with some troughs of low pressure trying to interrupt that flow. So that's the general weather pattern for tonight. As we get into your Friday, there's that low pressure system now. Uh, just about it add to it, 993 millibars, still deepening as it's moving to the north and northeast. The occlusion here, the purple line, means that it's got cold air and warm air all wrapped up and mixed up together. And this is a pretty normal situation as these weather patterns move into the Alaska waters. As it is still strengthening, we expect to see more fog and rain developing on that leading edge as that moves toward Nunavak Island and the Pribilovs by Friday afternoon. It will be passing over uh, on Alaska, Dutch Harbor, and Adak, and Atka, and a little bit more of a westerly flow will kick in. Do expect gales to develop as a result of that as well. So you're going to have worsening visibility, precipitation, and stronger winds that will last probably well into the weekend, not to mention some cooler weather. Low pressure sitting outside of Prince William Sound for your Friday it drops to about 1,013 millibars. We still have some weak high pressure in the area, and uh, that could keep some fog and clouds trying to move its way into parts of southeast. So kind of hit and miss stuff there as we're transitioning to a new weather pattern. Watch for some showers around the Chugach and the Kenai Peninsula as we get into your Friday. Uh, looks like a generally drier day as we get into uh, the next uh, day or so into Saturday, but uh, if you look westward, you can see the, the change in the weather pattern to come. Up across the north, Norton Sound to St. Lawrence Island, high pressure is still in charge, though it is weakening, and areas of light um, fog will be possible around the Chukchi Coast and into the Bering Sea region. The warmer air that was passing over the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast still bringing some showers to northern parts of the Yukon. Probably still a few thunderstorm activity areas uh, across the upper Yukon into the upper Tanana Valley. And if you look very carefully, you can see another cold front working its way out of the Arctic. This will be dropping southward, but probably a little bit more east to west motion than north to south motion at this time. So we get into Saturday, you can see it has moved southward a little bit. It's not going to come flying over the Brooks Range just yet. High pressure is still sitting there trying to act as a stopgap to keep that from moving in. There will be some areas of light rain, fog, and drizzle across the north slope, especially the Chukchi Coast, where a lot of that northerly flow will be centered initially. Out west, our low has dropped to about 987 millibars now. And once again, notice that tight pressure gradient packing here across the central and western chain. That means the winds are going to come up, and they're probably going to stay there for a little while, so at least some gales. It uh, looks like we're going to be dealing with rain, drizzle, and fog around some of the eastern chain. So on Alaska, all the way up toward the Pribloffs for your Friday and Saturday, looking at some decreased uh, uh, visibility and ceilings there for your aviation concerns and certainly some chop on the sea as well. Showers will be found around the mountains, the Alaska Range, with a better chance of thunderstorm activity across the upper Yukon and the upper Tanana Valley, but really seems to be kind of limited to that right now, uh, maybe a little bit further north into the Yukon. High pressure is sitting across the Gulf. This strengthens up to about 1,018 millibars, and now we're starting to bring some moisture back into parts of southeast. Uh, watch for some showers to be a little more likely as well as clouds for your Saturday afternoon. So a change in the weather's on the way. Let's take a look at the temperatures. What happens there? As we get into Friday morning, upper 30s found across most of the North Slope. 35, one of our coolest spots around Kaktovik and around uh, Barrow and Uktyavik. As you get into the Seward Peninsula, mid to upper 40s there. Kotzebue, you're looking at temps in the upper 40s, almost 50 degrees. Many locations across the interior will be at or above that 50 degree mark, so still fairly mild from Fort Yukon all the way down toward uh, Tanana, Fairbanks, North Pole as you get into McGrath, lower 50s there, 53 in Kodiak, and mid to upper 50s really for most of southeast overnight. Haines and Skagway, pretty nice. Yakutat around 50. Unalaska, Dutch Harbor about 47, 44 in St. Paul. High temperatures as we get into your Friday afternoon. Still pretty mild, uh, mid to upper 70s if not 80 degrees in some parts of the upper Yukon Valley, Fairbanks. Uh, toward Eagle, 76. South Central, Talkeetna, you're looking at temps in the upper 70s as well. McGrath probably pushing low to mid 70s there. Galena, 74. 
Hooslia, pretty mild as well. Uh, Ambler, you're looking at about 74 degrees there. Anaktuvik Pass also uh, pretty much pushing that 70 degree mark. As you get into uh, the uh, Kotzebue Sound region, Kivalina, temperatures there in the mid to upper 50s, maybe even 60 degrees. 56 around Nome, Gamble about 44, St. Paul near 50 degrees. ADAC and ACA, lower to mid-50s for you. Southeast, upper 60s to about 70 for Friday afternoon. Saturday morning, 40s and 50s, just about for everyone. Some of the warm spots, of course, the interior, the upper Kuskokwim Valley, 30s to mid-40s for the North Slope, 50s for the West Coast, Southwest, Bristol Bay, about 50 degrees around King Salmon and Dillingham, mid-50s for Southeast, and 40s for the Alaska Peninsula and the Chain. South Central warms up nicely into the mid to upper 70s. Over 80 degrees again for the central and eastern interior. The North Slope, uh, the central, eastern, and western Beaufort Sea Coast probably pushing 60 degrees around Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse. Cooler behind it though around Barrow and Utkiavik uh, toward uh, Wainwright. Lower 60s for uh, uh, Nome and southeast you're looking at temps in the mid 60s, 63 in Kodiak. A quick check of the outlook for climate tells us that cooler weather is on the way as we head toward uh, the next week, so ending June 19th, the 8 to 14 day outlook shows cooler than average weather expected for most of the mainland, southeast, and parts of the west coast and north. Precipitation wise, wetter than normal weather for parts of the western interior. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. On the flying weather now, IFR conditions are expected to build into the northern Gulf as we head into Friday morning. Uh, you'll see increased areas of MVFR across Prince William Sound and outside of the Kenai Peninsula and Resurrection Bay and perhaps just outside of the Barren Islands. You'll see that filling in across central and southern parts of southeast. Northern parts of southeast should escape with VFR in the morning, probably lasting into the afternoon as well. But you'll notice more of low clouds and stratus starting to build in outside of Cross Sound and uh, working its way down past Sitka, though MVFR should be maintained closer to Sitka's in the west coast. As you look out toward the west, IFR conditions spreading into the YK Delta and uh, into Norton Sound, we expect to see MVFR to start. IFR also creeping up in through the Bering Strait and across the North Slope uh, through the Utkiavik area in Barrow and just south toward Wainwright, expect as improved conditions as much as MVFR. As we get into the afternoon, that should pull away from the coast. We'll be watching for isolated shower and thunderstorm activity for the upper Yukon and the upper Tanana Valley. IFR conditions are still mainly across the outer coast and the northern Gulf, with MVFR right over the coast and inland into the central and southern parts of southeast, though watch for a little bit of IFR to sneak into the Clarence Strait region. IFR remains fairly thick across St. Lawrence Island, St. Paul, St. George areas, and hovering around Nunavak Island, but not quite over it, with IFR conditions also for the central, eastern, and western chain. No big change out there for Saturday morning, and for more, most of Norton Sound, look for IFR to start your Saturday. It'll creep its way into Kostabu Sound and just graze the north slope, fairly close to Wainwright and Utkiavik once again. IFR conditions expected across central and eastern parts of the Gulf, with MVFR now spreading all the way through southeast. Prince William Sound and southern parts of Cook Inlet, fairly close to Kodiak Island. By Saturday afternoon, shower and thunderstorm activity may be back for the upper Tanana and the upper Yukon Valley once again with IFR near the north slope, but MVFR are more likely to cover uh, coastal villages. Look for IFR conditions hit and miss through uh, the Bering Strait, St. Matthew Island, MVFR around the Priblobs with the central and western chain under IFR conditions. Many areas east of St. Uh, Sand Point should be looking at IFR. Most of the Gulf will be under IFR and MVFR expected all the way around our north and eastern Gulf Coast communities there, including all of southeast. Here's your pass conditions in detail. Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass we expect to be A-OK. -okay. Lake Clark, Merrill all the way through Rainy. Windy Pass and uh, Isabel Pass should be under VFR conditions. When you get up to Mentasta Pass, we expect to see a marginal start, a slight chance for a shower or thunderstorm there in the afternoon, but overall improving. Tanita Pass, we expect to see marginal uh, t uh, conditions to start and then ending up at VFR. Portage Pass, similar conditions there. This will be on the Prince William Sound side. Everything else in Cook Inlet looks to be okay. And Chilkoot and White Pass should be okay for one more day. But Saturday, conditions start to lean over toward MVFR again. Your freezing levels show that wave of cool weather passing across the north and eastern interior in the north slope. Levels as low as 2,000 feet there with uh, cooler weather moving through the upper Yukon to about 8,000 foot for the freezing levels there. Otherwise, you're talking about eight to 10,000 foot freezing levels for most of the south, southwest, and southeastern regions. Up north, the levels climbing into over 12,000 feet, and you can see warmer weather building in ahead of that next wave 
anywhere from 10 to 14,000 foot levels across the central and western chain. I think potential is really pretty limited. There is moisture there. It's also very high, and right now it's kind of scattering out. So we've got some drier weather in place. Of course, uh, convection implies isolated severe icing potential there across the upper Yukon and the upper Tanana, but we don't see any significant threats for most of Alaska for your Friday. Instead, let's focus on the jet stream. Our quarter of fast-moving air here is moving across the North Pacific, and it's caught onto uh, the remnants of an extra tropical cyclone now. This is um, a, a leftover of a typhoon. And it's going to spread quite a bit of moisture into northern parts of the Gulf, maybe southwest, as we head into the end of next week. So we've got a way to go, but this is the next wave of weather coming at us. Uh, you can see that current wave moving across northern sections of Alaska. And in the meantime, we're kind of under the influence of this ridge of high pressure. So winds are fairly light across the interior, much stronger conditions across the central and eastern Beaufort Sea coast, a weak low just south and west of southeastern Alaska, and low pressure organizing here across the western bearing. Fast winds on the south side of that up to 50, even 75 knots. At 3,000 feet, those winds are still there. They're a little bit slower, anywhere from 40 to 60 knots coming in from the west. Weak areas of low pressure across the central and eastern Gulf, light winds from the north and west over southeast, light winds across the interior, and once again, a ribbon of strong air right across the north slope, running around 30 to 40 knots there, light southerlies up the west coast to 3,000 feet. Turbulence will focus on the north slope below 4,000 feet, a little bit of chop there, and also across the central and western chain, and watch out for isolated thunderstorms in the afternoon. More of your marine weather in just a moment. Visiting Mars. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plaw Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. The planet Mars will soon be back in the nighttime sky and looking big, bright, and beautiful. And red. Exactly. Mars will be 35 million miles from Earth on July 27th, and it hasn't been this close since 2003. Currently, we have several unmanned spacecraft circling around Mars and two rovers rolling on Mars. So it got us thinking, what would it be like to visit Mars up close? In person. So this week, we'll show you where to find Mars in the earthly sky and then take you on a journey across millions of miles to the red planet itself. Let's go. Okay, we have our sky set up for July 8th facing southeast at 10.30 p.m. Hey, wait a second, I don't see Mars. That's true, but as a consolation prize, you can find the planet Saturn. Awesome. Okay, I know this show is supposed to be about Mars, but while you're planet gazing, Saturn will look like an ordinary, non-blinking yellow star. If you point a telescope at it, though, it looks amazing with the rings and several moons. Now, if we stay up a little later and advance our time to 1045, 11 p.m., 11.15, and finally 11.30, we can see a big, bright, reddish light clear the horizon. That is Mars. It will be super easy to identify since it will be suspiciously bright. Now, I want to get us to July 27th when Mars will appear brightest in the sky. If we advance time day by day, we will see Mars and Saturn get higher each night. On July 24th, the moon slides over next to Saturn, and then by July 27th, we'll have a full moon next to stunning Mars. That will be quite a sight. So now comes the fun part. Let's blast off for Mars and take you in for a closer look. Up, up, up and away! At its closest, Mars will be about 35 million miles from Earth on July 27th. It normally takes a rocket about six to seven months to travel from Earth to Mars, but we'll get you there in a few seconds. As we approach the red planet, we'll first notice that it's not super red. It looks more orange, brown, pink, and rusty. And that's because there is a lot of iron in those rocks, and they've actually rusted over time. The bright white areas are the polar ice caps. There's lots of dry ice around the Martian poles, but also a fair amount of water ice. Maybe we can chip off a few pieces if we get thirsty. Before we land, let's fly by Mars's two moons. First up is Deimos, the smaller one. It's less than eight miles across, and it circles the planet every 30 hours. Then we come to the larger moon Phobos. 
It's still a very small moon, only about 14 miles wide. Despite being covered in craters, Phobos might make a great base of operations for future manned missions. It could be a stopover or serve as an orbiting observatory to watch the planet more closely. Someday, astronauts may shuttle down to Mars and back from this little moon. We made it. We're the first humans to reach the surface of Mars. And what a view. Most of Mars looks like a dry, desolate orange desert with rocks strewn about and deep craters. Any water on Mars is hidden below the ground or is frozen in the ice caps. But you can also find tall mountains like Olympus Mons, which is three times taller than any mountain on Earth. And deep valleys like Valles Marineris, which is 2,500 miles long and five times deeper than the Grand Canyon. Plus, there's two rovers still rolling on Mars. Look, there's Curiosity climbing up Mount Sharp. Hey, Curiosity! We may be decades away from actually sending humans to Mars, but one can always dream. So, this week, look for Mars in the southeastern sky after 11.30 p.m. And when you find it, dream about taking a journey to the red planet. You can visit its two moons and kick up some red Martian dust. It's all there when you keep, keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Time for a quick check of your sea ice edge. Not a whole lot of change in the north around the central and eastern Beaufort Sea Coast. Didn't get a really good look at it with the satellite picture today, so the sea ice forecasters have not made a whole lot of changes there. Uh, we'll watch for some improved conditions there in the next couple days as the winds begin to settle down. We have seen a little more melting here across the Chukchi Sea. That peninsula of ice that's hung up on the shoal is uh, reducing in its coverage at this point. This is concentration, so the white means uh, concentration above 80%. Still that big pack ice, and there is some higher concentration and thickness ice sitting here well north of the Beaufort Seacoast. So this will be slower to change as we go. Anytime you want, check out the latest sea ice conditions at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. In southeast, the winds are going to be pretty nice. It looks like the winds will be kind of holding back for a while. Light winds and small seas across a large part of the archipelago and the inside passage, two to three foot seas with winds from the south and southeast. Light winds across the outer coast too, looking only around 10 knots or so with about four to five foot seas at best for Saturday. Not a big change really. Still looking at light winds and small seas even outside of the Dixon entrance. Five foot seas or five knot winds with a four foot sea but the winds do come up around the Lynn Canal. 20 knots with a four foot sea there on Saturday. All in all not a bad couple days there to be out on the water. And same goes for Prince William Sound as well. The weekend's going to start off nice with a southwest flow, 10 knots and two foot seas, light winds outside of the Sound and toward Resurrection Bay. As you get over the Barrens, we're still looking at westerlies across the region, 20 knots with a seven foot sea and light winds coming down out of Cook Inlet, only 10 knots with a two to three foot sea there on Friday. But big changes there on Saturday. Take a look at this. Southerlies pick up quite a bit south of Kenai down toward Homer. Uh, five foot seas expected there up to 20 knots. Southwesterlies in the northern part of Cook Inlet, 15 knots and four foot seas. We're still talking about light winds inside and outside of Prince William Sound. Those seas are coming up a little bit. Three to five foot seas there in the north and western Gulf and that southeast flow. Not as strong as what we we're talking about a couple days ago over the Barren Islands. So there's good news there. Westerlies remain pretty light across Bristol Bay. 15 knots and four foot seas all the way down the Bering Sea coast. You can see those westerlies pushing into Kodiak Island as well. Five to seven foot seas expected on either side as we get into Friday, but a look out west on Saturday shows something building out across the chain. We'll talk about that in just a minute. For Saturday, southerlies are building into parts of Bristol Bay and the Bering Sea Coast, two to four foot seas, anywhere from 10 to 15 knots across Kodiak Island and the North Pacific with seas coming up to about nine feet uh, south and west of Sand Point there on Saturday. Now, the big picture out here across the central and western chain is what's left over from a typhoon. Typhoon no longer, but it is going to be creating some wind and waves across the region. Winds come up across the chain on Friday, 25 to 30 knots in all areas, 3 to 6 foot seas across the Bering Sea coast, 6 to 12 foot seas across the Pacific. Out west, you're talking about 10 to 13 with a southerly wind of around 30 knots or so. The big wind and the big waves will cross over the west and then 
hover here across the central and western bearing as we get into Saturday. Seas here could be above 20 to 25 feet with stronger winds, but the Aleutians primarily will be kind of given just a glancing blow. 30 to 35 knots tops. It looks like 18 to 14 foot seas there across the bearing. 12 to 15 foot seas across the Pacific. Out west, westerly is driving into the weather system at 35 knots, 13 to 14 foot seas. If you're heading out, keep your eye on a track of this and stay out of the way. And across the west, 10 to 15 knots there closer to the coastline. You're looking at small seas most likely around Nunavak Island out towards St. Matthew. You can see a big change there. 20 knots around St. Matthew with four foot seas. And the winds are coming up for St. Paul and St. George on Friday as well. Uh, the winds will switch around from a northwesterly direction in the Kuskokwim Delta to about 20 knots from the south. And that southerly flow will extend further north as we go. A lot of weather blowing into that low pressure system. St. Paul and St. George, your weather's changing by Saturday. Southerly winds, 30 knots with a 9-foot sea ahead of the storm. Westerlies, uh, 10 knots with a 1-foot sea inside of Norton Sound. And up north, westerlies continue across the Beaufort Sea Coast. They'll be a little bit stronger on Friday than what we'll see on Saturday. Uh, southerlies are working into the Chukchi Sea as well, continuing to melt the ice around the shoal too. Look for light winds around the Bering Strait, 15 knots or so with 2- to 3-foot seas. It uh, looks like the winds will be coming up a little bit more there on Saturday. That southwesterly flow bringing some warmer weather to you. Southwesterlies in the Chukchi Coast. And winds diminishing 15 to 25 across the Beaufort Sea Coast for your Saturday. Recapping tonight's weather, low pressure sits across the northern Gulf. Just a few showers associated with that. Some showers popping up across the Alaska Range and south central this afternoon. Watch for areas of smoke in the interior overnight. And here's that next weather maker moving into the southern Bering Sea at 993 millibars on Friday. The triple point passing over the central and eastern chain. A better chance for showers and thunderstorms across the eastern interior. A few more clouds and maybe a couple showers down south across the southern peninsula of southeast tomorrow. And uh, or the archipelago, I should say. Uh, colder air dropping in across the Arctic will continue its trek again southward for Saturday. Low pressure uh, winds up even more to 987 millibars on Saturday afternoon with wind and waves over the central and western Bering Sea. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. See you again tomorrow. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.